control is all about moisture lock. Moisture seal, moisture lock, and your hair being happy and late. When your hair just sleeps good and everybody's just entwined and they're holding each other and they're singing love songs, when your hair is angry, you will know. Welcome back, my loves. As you know, back in 2019, I made a fridge control video and we are here in 2021. So I just thought it was just a perfect time to update you guys on my tips for frizz control. Pretty much the hair is still laid, as you can see. <laughs> I don't wanna be a show off, but like I gotta show it off. Like what's the point of me making a frizz control tips video for you guys if I can't control my own frizz and you know, that ain't it. So, oh, a bit of that. Oh, we gotta get a close up. Yes, you can see it. It's laid. It is slayed. And I am on day, I did my hair. I'm on day three. So, this baby is day three fizz control. Now, of course, a big major thing I don't fluff. I don't care for all that volume. I don't care if my hair is fine, if my density is medium, if I don't have a big, thick, full head of hair. I don't care. This is what God gave me. This is what I'm working with. And this is what I'm rocking until the end of time. This is how I love my hair. I love it when it's under control, under manners. It's on the lockdown and it ain't going nowhere. With all that being said, let's get right into this tips video before I ramble. One major tip that has taught me to control my frizz is knowing my hair porosity. Knowing your porosity is a major key to help you to know what to use and how to apply it to your hair in order for your hair to retain, absorb that moisture and to lock it in without it being overworked and absorb it and swelling up, creating more frizz, which you don't want. Tip number two, water. Water, water, water. You guys know I always talk about water because it is so important. I don't care. Doesn't matter your porosity, don't matter your hair curl pattern. Water is a key ingredient. Using more water than your actual product will help you no matter if you're washing your hair or styling your hair. Using more water than product will help you. You don't want to keep applying so much product onto your hair. Yes, your hair can absorb it after a while, but sometimes we can just do a little bit too much. The water will just help you just to bring that product in and to absorb it into your hair. When I'm styling my hair, I use either spring water or distilled water in my spray bottle, or I even use my hair juice, but the water from that is either distilled or spring water, either way. If you live in a place where you have harsh water, which is very common for a lot of us, my place right now, the water is harsh. So I always have a filter. I have a filter in my bathroom. A lot of people don't know, but having harsh water will create buildup on your scalp. It can also cause hair loss, damage, frizzy hair, dry hair, it is not cute. My water filter that I have is a pretty simple one that I got from Best Buy. I think it was probably uh, 35 bucks Canadian. And you can even check out on Amazon or even go to your local hardware store. They're easy to find, they're everywhere. It is not a problem and they're easy to install. Tip number three, detangle your hair. Frizz and tangles are like hand in hand amongst other things, but detangle your hair. A lot of people, they don't understand why they got frizzy hair, but most times too, their hair is so tangy, you can't even run your fingers through it, let alone a wide tooth comb. You guys know in 2019, I was doing a lot of detangling in the shower. I don't do it as much as I used to do it in the past because God damn it, it takes up a lot of time. So I like to just keep it moving now so I don't detangle as thoroughly as I used to do in the shower but I still always detangle my hair mostly with my fingers but I do also go in with a comb I don't use a detangling brush I prefer to use a comb for my hair type a few people do say that when they detangle especially in the shower their hair will swell up and create more frizz so for the reason for that either because your hair is not properly hydrated and deep conditioned 
or you just overworked your hair and it just swelled up with too much water. So you have to learn how to create a perfect balance. So when after you shampoo, you deep condition for a good amount of time, you detangle, you don't want to keep going. You just want to get it to a point where it's nice and soft and you can see that your hair is curled up, it's clump, it's defined. And then you go in and you apply your product. You don't want to do too much. Tip number four, it's a big thing with me, deep condition. We can never, ever, ever skip a deep condition. Some people just use a conditioner. That's fine. As long as you're putting back some type of moisture into your hair, you have to maintain a proper cleansing, hydrated, and moisturizing routine. You want to deep condition your hair. For the ones who are high porosity, you want to incorporate protein. Now, you don't want to overdo the protein, especially if you're low porosity as well. When deep conditioning, if you're high or low, I always recommend a hooded steamer. That is something that saved me when my hair would just be so dry and I couldn't even run my fingers through it. A hooded steamer saved my hair. I don't use it as frequently as I used to anymore because my hair is pretty much on a well-balanced, moisturized routine. But if you're low porosity, especially if your hair is dull, damaged, color treated, it's lifeless, you know, it's shedding a lot, get you a hooded steamer and just go in with a good deep conditioner, work it through your hair, detangle, you're going to come out and you're going to feel just a big major difference. So with deep conditioning being tip number four, this brings me to tip number five, ingredients. Knowing what's in your product is a big major key to help you to eliminate wasting your money, wasting your time, wasting space, and just creating frustration. We must educate ourselves on the good, the bad, and you know, the pretty much okay ingredients that are in these products that we're buying for our hair because we can buy a product that we think is going to be good because it's cheap. For a bit, it can work, but then eventually it can cause damage somewhere down the road. And it can even be a all natural, good, high-end brand, all clean ingredients, and you can use it in your hair, but your hair can reject it. That has happened to me many times. I have you guys know my stash is pretty much 90% black owned and the ingredients are clean. You can understand it with no problem, but my hair can reject it. It's normal, but you just have to understand there's nothing wrong with the product. It just doesn't work for your hair. Tip number six. There's a lot of touchy, touchy, touchy. And when I say touchy, 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 I mean like touchy, touchy, touchy. I remember one time, um, I think I was natural for about four you know, I was natural for about three years and I used to work in the office and I would always come with my wash and goes and I would work for long hours at the computer and I would just always be like swinging my hand and like, yeah, I'm cute. And then I noticed like at times I would just be picking at the back, not like picking and ripping out my hair, but like sometimes I just want to feel my curl and I would end up separating my curls. And to the point I did not notice how bad I was doing it until the middle, like literally the middle, it just broke off. It broke off so bad to the point when I straightened my hair, my hair was like, it was long and then it went up into like a V. And I was just like, like oh gosh. Overly touching your hair can cause damage, okay? Once you wash and style your hair, you're not to touch it. I know it's a lot, but you're not to touch. You're not to keep on moving it and doing all this heebie-jeebie stuff because you're just going to create a lot of movement, especially if you have fine hair. It's going to tangle. If you like to overstyle your hair, a lot of people like to style your, their hair on a daily, every other day, two, three times in a week. I'm not one of those people, but you are going to get frizz. If you're trying to work on your frizz, you need to stop doing that. If you like to over fluff, over fluff, <laughs> you're going to get frizz. The only way you can fluff, I find, and not get too much frizz, because no matter, you're going to get some type of frizz. But if you don't want to get too much frizz, you can over fluff, especially the top of your hair. At least, you know, like up here, the midsection and the back. But 
don't forget the back is gonna get frizz the mid is gonna get frizz everyone's gonna get frizz but at least your crown at least it won't look too crazy and too frizzy but there's no way you can fluff your hair and get volume without getting some type of frizz or losing some type of moisture definition also if you sleep or you know in your in your house I, a lot of people like to lay on the couch lay on their bed do whatever have their hand in their head i don't do that when i'm in the house if i want to like if i'm feeling tired or if i know i'm going to lay down i put on my hair tie and the best hair ties i believe are silk silk hair ties i know a lot of people use satin there's nothing wrong with satin because i still use satin but i prefer when my hair is laid like this and i want to keep it i use silk number seven emollents versus humectant emollents are loved by high porosity hair emollents are sealants because we know high porosity hair we can bring in all the moisture we want but we can't hold on to it just think of a of a person who can't keep a relationship high porosity hair can't keep moisture we can get that man or we can get that woman but we can't hold on to them <laughs> just think about that it's super easy so we need emollents emollents are super super beneficial for our hair especially if you're fine hair and you have high porosity emollents will save you so much time in that shower emollents are best when you're going to pre-poo when you're going to shampoo when you're going to deep condition and when you're going to style doesn't matter um because high porosity hair will absorb pretty much anything okay you will take in anything for low porosity people emollents and humectants are good for you. Humectants are ingredients that will help to draw in the moisture because your hair shaft is so tight, it don't wanna let go. For low porosity people, when, you know, if you wanna do a pre-poo, you wanna wash, wanna deep condition, humectants are great. When it comes to styling, emollients are good for you. Using too many humectants on your hair will cause swelling and your hair just to frizz all the way up and no matter what you do your hair is going to be frizzy so that's why sometimes like i was saying before when some people have the tangle in the shower and the hair just puffs up it's too much moisture being drawn into your hair so you have to use something like an emollient just to help you just to seal it down because when you're low porosity you can overuse humectants and a lot of products have humectants in them that's why I say it's important to understand and to recognize these ingredients based off your hair type so you're not causing more damage to your hair and you're getting the results that you want. Tip number eight, clay washes. My favorite, my favorite is bentonite clay. Bentonite clay is my baby, especially when it comes to frizz. Rosso clay is fine too. That makes my hair even more softer. But when it comes to laying my cuticles down and my hair shaft down, no frizz, no nothing. And that shine, bentonite clay is for me. I always suggest to people, try to use some type of clay washes into your hair regimen. For maybe, you know, you can use it once a month, bi-weekly, even weekly. Some people don't want to use it too much because they're going to be like, what about the buildup? Some people really need to go in with a shampoo and there's nothing wrong with that. But I believe in a clay wash. Use it maybe once in a month and you'll see a difference. Especially if your hair gets super dry after shampooing all the time, no matter what you do, a clay wash will help you. Tip number nine, clean hair, clean scalp, happy roots. Do not neglect your hair. You cannot complain about all these type of things and you don't do your hair on the regular. Set yourself a proper regimen and know when to balance between moisture and protein. Don't overload on the protein and don't overload on the moisture. And don't undertake on the protein and don't undertake on the moisture. Listen to your Number hair. Number 10, work in in smaller sections. That 
is helpful, especially when you're deep conditioning and when you're styling. No matter how much hair you have on your head, work in smaller sections just to make sure every single strand is getting attention. Also, smoothing your hair down, laying it down, especially if your hair easily gets tangled. Work with your hair. Don't over manipulate your hair. Keep it in order in one direction because if you're doing this and that and you're going up and down, it's going to create confusion and then you're going to get frustrated. And then with frustration, you don't ever get results with frustration. Number 11, always, always, always love, embrace, respect, understand the crown you have on your head is for you and only you. Be proud of your crown and rock it like no other. Even though it's not the hair texture that you want, God gave you that hair for a reason and you have it for that reason. Love your hair no matter what because it is a part of you and just take care of your hair and you're going to get results no matter what. So that is it for now. You guys know I appreciate and I love you all. Making these videos really does help me put a smile on a lot of people's faces, especially mine, because I get to interact with you guys. I don't always talk too much. Having these braces in my mouth is like a whole other new journey, but no matter what, I love and appreciate you all. And I also wanna thank you guys so much for watching and for your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye guys.